So the question is, how does um, spiritual practice, how does right theology issue forth in social justice and in spiritual practices around and oriented towards social justice? Is that a good summary? Okay, so how does right theology issue forth in social justice? And I think that as we as Christians come to see more of what it is that God is up to in our world, that requires learning more about who God is, what God is up to, learning more about ourselves, who we are, and what it means to be a creature created in the image of the creator God in the midst of this creation, and also how we understand and relate to other people. We begin to see more and more that what God's redemptive activity is up to is righting the relationships that are wronged or that are maligned in the midst of that sort of triangle. So how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to God, how we relate to others, how we relate to the rest of creation. These are all the relationships that we see in Genesis pictured as being beautiful, as being harmonious, as being what they were created to be. And then the fall, our sin, our human decision to rebel against God fractured those relationships. So we are divided from ourselves. We are divided from God. We are divided from others. We are separated and divided from the creation which we were placed into to be image bearers in and caretakers of. So we see all these relational fractures that take place. And I believe that as we become more cognizant of what God is up to, as the Spirit conforms us to the image of God, we begin to participate more in God's redemptive work to restore and to right those fractured relationships. When we look at the notion of justice, when we look at the notion of dikaios, dikaiosune in the Greek, the notion that is contained therein is of things being what they were created to be, of things being rightly ordered, rightly structured. And this is, I believe, what God's redemptive activity is at work in the world to do, is to bring all things to the flourishing for which God created them. And that will mean that all of those relationships are rightly ordered, rightly related, rightly oriented, and that justice will prevail, that we'll be able to look at the creation when it's fully redeemed and uh, along with God, praise, praise God and acknowledge God's work to bring all of those fractured relationships into right relationship. So that's what I understand social justice to be about, is the writing of the relationships which are fractured and which are not what they are supposed to be. In our world today, the more power you have, the more you can acquire for yourself at other people's expenses. That's often how our world is oriented. The powerful exist on the top of the pyramid and are supported by the rest of the people who are not at the top of the pyramid. Another way to say it more bluntly is that those who are on the top are living on the blood of others or are living on the backs of others. And it seems to me that in the upside down kingdom of Christ, we find the most powerful God himself not coming to be served, not coming to exist on the top of the pyramid, but rather coming to serve. That in the upside down kingdom of God, the most powerful is servant to all, is living for and existing for and oriented towards the flourishing of others. So I think that's one of the just most malignant fractures in those relationships is that the more power we have as human beings in our world today, the more we tend to exist on the blood and backs of others. So social justice moves us in the direction of those relationships being rightly oriented, where my flourishing and your flourishing <clears throat> Are directly connected and your flourishing and someone a half a world away is directly connected so when we see the kingdom of god coming in its fullness in the scriptures what is depicted in the book of revelation is a flourishing creation where everything is finally marked by shalom it being what it was supposed to be it being what it was created to be there being a, a profound and an integrated harmony in which nothing is existing on the back or on the blood of anything else, but rather all things are what they were created to be. They've come to the fruition and the fulfillment of what they were meant to be, what they were created to be. So in terms of how this connects with Under the Overpass or sort of Sam's and my journey on the streets, I believe that homelessness, poverty, suffering in our world are manifestations of the fractured relationships which are the result of our fall as human beings. And that part of what compassion does in our world, part of what generosity does in our world, is heal some of the wounds of those fractured relationships. Attentiveness intersects here, obviously, because if we're blind and we're unwilling to see the suffering of others, it's pretty hard to work against the fractures that have come into our world and that are causing so much pain and suffering in our world. But there's also a systematic approach to this. 
Uh, when we talk about social justice, there are individual relationships, there's compassion, and there's generosity, but I think one of the other questions that we're invited into, it seems to me, by the gospel, by the good news of Christ, is to both name and then seek the reformation of the systems which perpetuate injustice, which perpetuate human suffering in our world. Because it's not just individual people, there are huge systems in place as well that form and shape how we live our lives. So to begin to put the gospel, the good news of Christ, the invitation to the kingdom of God, the invitation to all things flourishing in the fulfillment for which they were created, to begin to put that hope and that vision in contrast and in conversation with some of the systems of injustice that exist in our world and some of the systems which keep people in oppressed and depressed and um, oppressed locations and places. So I think that's part of the hope of the gospel, it seems to me, is to begin seeking to work towards that, to participate with God, to co-labor with God, to work synergistically with God in what God is up to in our world.